into their studies as they do into the recess. Wusong or Boston, children are the same the world over. I hate to think of their growing up into men who believe there's such a great difference between them. <laughs> it's a pity children can't rule the earth. undignified to fight? I do, but he doesn't. If you don't behave yourself, there'll be no recess for either of you. Understand? Yes, ma'am. Now, run along. What did you say about children ruling the earth? <laughs> the young scamps would contradict me. <laughs> your brother's plane? I believe it is. Yes, it's Peter. It looks as though he's bringing a friend, too. Some young swain, no doubt, who is eager to meet our beautiful teacher. <laughs> Let's hope we won't be too disappointed. Todd, he's flying right by here. to shoot Peter down. Is he hurt, Doctor? I don't know. Probable concussion and internal injuries. Tell, please. Irene. Irene. Everything is going to be all right. Dr. Adams will take care of you. Lie still. Take it easy. Cotton, please. No, no, never mind that. Now, Irene, Sargosa, who will be here any minute. Sargosa? Well, what does he want with you? It's this. He mustn't get it. No matter what happens, Irene, he mustn't get it. Why, it's part of an amulet. Don't tell me that thing is the cause of all this. That thing, as you call it, means much to China. And to Sargoza, if he can get it. Hoi Long trusted me to deliver it for him to the Sun people in San Francisco. But what has Sargoza to do with all that? He found out I had it. Irene, you're the only one I can trust with it. You'll have to take my place. Don't exert yourself, Peter. Don't you understand? He'll be here any minute in this room. Irene, you must be gone with that amulet before he gets here.
now you understand how important that amulet is. What it means to us, to Hoi Long's people, and to China. I wouldn't ask it of you, Irene, if there was any other way. But there's no one else I can trust. But you're hurt. I don't like to leave you now. I can't. If you don't go now, it'll be too late. Whoever has that amulet can either help or rob China. I gave Hoi Long my word that China would not be robbed. Don't worry about me. I'll be all right. I'll get Peter to the base hospital. He'd be well taken care of there. I'll go. Good girl. Now, there's a boat leaving Shanghai for the States tomorrow morning. You must be on it. You'll have the protection of many of our old friends when you get to San Francisco. I only wish you were going to. I'll join you as soon as I can. Now remember, Irene, no word of this to anyone. And if you run into trouble in Shanghai, look up Howard Barclay at the Cafe Hotel. You can trust him. Howard Barclay. I'll remember. You'll look after him. Thank you. This will ease you until I can get you to the hospital and have some x-rays taken. That doesn't matter now, Doctor. I only hope that I ring... Sarkoza. What do you want? The amulet. You had a narrow escape, my friend. If you want to benefit by it, you'll hand it over to me. I haven't got it. You'll force me to search you. I refuse to permit it. I did not ask your permission. Nothing. What did you do with it? I threw it out of the plane. No, you didn't. I was watching you. That girl who was here, did you give it to her? Did you? Maybe you tell me. Did you give something to that girl who was here? You. Did you see him give something to that girl? I see nothing. Nothing. Don't lie to me. I not know. I don't see, girl. So there was no girl here. Well, she won't get very far. Sir, as the last boat for today, the ship's loaded. Can't my wife get on, sir? Sorry, but there's no more room. There'll be another ship at nine tomorrow morning. No, there's nothing like a war to make people unhappy. Hey, Murph, take a look. Oh, you poor goop, why didn't you show me this earlier? You could have went off and attacked. Oh, I got soft-hearted or something. You know, women and children first. 
Besides, I figured I could spend another night in this dump. The fellas in this fracas couldn't hit you if they tried. <laughs> yeah, well, where'd you get that rooked wing? That's just it. They weren't aiming at me when I got this. I was in the international settlement minding my own business when off went the fireworks. You're lucky to be able to talk about it. Between you and me, I'm glad I got it. When the office found out I'd been winged, they cabled me to come home. Probably figured I couldn't handle the camera with one met. <laughs> Can you? Sure, but why tell them? Well, you meet me in the morning and I'll send you off on the first boat. She's the Nichimaru, a Japanese ship gone to Manila. She'll transfer her passengers there to an American liner. McGinty, where did you get a handle like that? Faith, and haven't you heard? I come from a long line of seafarers. Down goes McGinty. <laughs> well, I'll be here the first thing in the morning. And don't let me get soft-hearted again. Ah, it's the curse of the Irish. I'll get you aboard if I have to use a bayonet to get you there. <laughs> When is the next boat out to the President Taft? The last boat is left, miss. But I must get on that boat. I'm sorry, miss, but she's jammed to the waterline. But I've got to. How about it, Mert? Any exceptions? Say the word and I'll roar out myself. You ought to know better than ask me that. I tried. I thought I had some influence. Never mind him, miss. You give your oil in the morning with your passport in order and you'll probably get off all right. Passport? It's a better ship. I'm going on it myself. That makes it a better ship. Do I have to have a passport even for evacuation? You sure do, miss. It'll be a Japanese ship used in American trade for evacuation of American citizens only. You have to wait your turn and you'll... I get one like that every once in a while. Not me, I don't. I never had that much luck. So long. Tavares before you get hurt. Don't be an idiot. I am General Alexis of the Soviet Embassy. That girl is a spy. Yeah, well, he got just five seconds to be gone with the wind. Go on, beat it. Oh, boy. If that guy had ever called my... Well, that's gratitude for you. Any chance of getting my old room back? You haven't been gone long enough to rent it out. Have a boy take my bag up, will you? Yes. Boy? Roommate 12. Johnny McGinty, bless my soul, how are you? I thought by now you'd be upward bound to the States. Life is like that, Gallicuddy. How's tricks and where are the boys? Done at the Japanese consulate. Something to do with issuing a statement. How's the arm, Letty? Oh, fair to Midland. What's the matter, Johnny? Behind me with the spats. Who is it? A gentleman by the name of Sargoza. Not General Alexis. No, there's no General Alexis in this town. Not in the diplomatic service, as far as I know, and I should know. He used to be commissar with the Soviet embassy before they gave him the boot. Boy. Yes, sir. That man at the bar, who is he? Anything else? Well, I wouldn't have played ping pong with him at night if I were you. He gave a party the other night, and he got very, very drunk. And he showed us his knife tricks. And they can whip one out from either sleeve into a target very, very fast. <laughs> Johnny McGinty, sir. You stop here? Yes, sir. Room 812. I don't know what your connection with Mr. Segoza is, but if you're on the wrong end of the stick, I'll see it's very, very unhealthy. If you'll take a tip from me. I know. Get out tomorrow while I can. Aye.
Johnny, old boy, what a stroke of luck. I was overcome at the thought of single solitaire tonight. Why aren't you on the task, setting for home? Oh, my seat-bearing blood, I guess. Women and children first, and no room left for McGinty. <laughs> that good heart of yours will get you into trouble yet, Johnny. It already has. On the way back, I ran into a fellow who was trying to grab a girl against her will, and I stepped in. <laughs> <laughs> Chap rescues Maiden from Monster. Did she appreciate it, Johnny? Well, if she did, I never found out about it. When I turned around, she was gone. Not even a kiss or a scented handkerchief for your pains, eh? <laughs> well, fortunes of war and the Galahad complex. We all have a touch of that at least once in our young lives. Oh, but I'd love to have seen it. Was she pretty, Johnny? Of <laughs> course, she had to be. It says so in all the storybooks. Huh, the first time I rescued a maiden, she slapped my face for doing it. <laughs> Apparently liked the molesting chap's attentions and felt I'd ruined her chances. <laughs> Good luck. Well, I can't say I'm sorry, Johnny. You're missing the boat today was a bit of good luck for me. For you? Why? I'm leaving myself tomorrow. I've decided to get out of here and leave the war behind. I'm going to America. On the Nietzsche Maru? Yes, we'll be shipmates, do you mind? No, that's a break for me. Let's have dinner together later, what do you say? You know, our last night in Shanghai and all that. Sure, count me in. I'll be up in a few minutes. I've got to get a cable off first. Come to my room whenever you're ready. I'll be waiting for you. Is there a Mr. Howard Barclay registered here? Yes, miss. Room 810. Thank you. Shall I announce him? Barclay! Barclay! The door's unlocked. You. Well, the damsel in distress. Come in. Uh, just a minute. All right, sit down. Well, will you have a cigarette? No, thanks. You know, I... I wonder what happened to you. Did you come to thank me? You must forgive me for running away as I did. Well, it wasn't exactly according to Hoyle. Well, I had no idea you were the person I was looking for. Oh, that's all. Huh? Looking for me? I'm in trouble. Again? Now, don't tell me the desperate Desmond's still after you. It's no joking matter. I need your help. That's why I'm here. Well, I'd be glad to help you, if only to prove that chivalry still lives or something like that. But just for curiosity's sake, I'd like to know why you select me as your protector. My brother told me to come to you if I got in trouble. Your brother? Am I supposed to know him? His name is Peter Roma. Peter Roma? Oh, pardon me. But what do you know about Peter Roma? Now, this is the girl I was telling you about. You know, the girl I saved from a fate worse than death? <laughs> this is Mr. Barclay, your host. Mr. Barclay? How stupid of me. I'm Peter Roma's sister. Peter Roma's sister? Why, of course, then you're Irene. Well, let me have a good look at you. <laughs> Would you believe it? I used to dangle her on my knee when she was a mere infant. Mm. That'd be all right about now. Pardon me. He's just one of those incorrigible Irish-Americans, Irene. His name is Johnny McGinty. And you couldn't have chosen a better champion if you'd have to do the picking yourself. Well, now, dear. What's wrong? It's Sargosa. Sargosa? Oh, so it was Sargosa you locked horns with it. Pour me a spot of brandy out of that bottle, Jimmy. Things are becoming a bit involved. How come? Simply that you've locked horns with one of the two most dangerous men in China. I'll take one myself. Say! If is one of the two most dangerous men in China, who's the other one? A natural question. The other is Fuji Yokohama, Japan's number one military agent in Shanghai. 
But what does Sargozo want with you, my dear? Well, I'll step out if you want. Oh, you can trust Johnny, Irene. I vouch for it. Besides, he may want to help. Oh, I'll help, for more reasons than one. Thank you, Mr. McGinty. Ah, Johnny or I don't play. All right, Johnny. That's better. This is what they're after, this broken amulet. It's the key to five million dollars being held in San Francisco. The money is to be used to help China. Hmm, quite a sum. The other half of that is in San Francisco. And the money will be turned over only when this half is presented to the person who holds it. Extraordinary. Oh, now, wait a minute, lads and lassies. This Graustock business went out with the gay 90s. Now, I may be just a country boy from Peoria, Illinois, but after all, I'm a newspaper photographer and I've been around a little bit. When you start talking about broken amulets that have to be matched up in $5 million, well, that stuff belongs in the comic thrillers in my paper back home. <laughs> now, let's get on the level with this thing or just skip me. This is no joke, Johnny, and nobody's trying to pull your leg. I've been around a bit myself, and I believe it. But Irene, uh, how did you get this? Well, Sargosa found out Peter had it and shot his plane down. Peter was injured, so I took his place. Oh, I see. And how did Peter get into it? The money belongs to Hoi Lung's people. It's being kept on deposit in San Francisco for safety. Hoi Lung's cousin, who's with the Sun Company in that city, has the other half of the amulet. Why didn't this Hoi something or another go himself? Well, that would be impossible. He's too closely watched. Why pick on your brother? Johnny, your persistence is most embarrassing. It was Hoi Lung who gave the Roma family protection when the general fled to China. In other words, he was their benefactor. His home was theirs, and all he had, he shared with them. All right, forget it. But what I don't get is what this Sargoza guy is after if he isn't working for the Soviet embassy. My dear boy, you underestimate our worthy opponent. Of course, he isn't with the Soviet embassy, but it would make no difference if he were. Dear old Sargoza is always strictly for himself. Oh, I get it now. Sargoza gets his gadget, takes it to San Francisco, gets five million dollars and keeps it. For Sargoza. You're learning fast, Johnny. The point is, where do we go from here? And a very good point, too. Since I have a suspicion that we'll have more than Sargoza to contend with. Who? Does somebody else know about it? Well, possibly Fuji Yokohama. You know, there's very little takes place without Yokohama being aware of it. And if he disapproves... Well, you don't expect him to approve of five million dollars to be used for China, do you? That's why I'm concerned about him, Johnny. How do you know so much about him? That's part of my business. What is your business? Do you mind if I keep it to myself for a while? Oh, no, not at all, not at all. And I'm sorry if I stepped on your toes. No, that's quite all right, Johnny. As for you, my dear, you must leave Shanghai tomorrow morning. But I can't. I have no passport. Kind of stymie, don't we? One thing we can't do is fake a passport. There's only one ship going out tomorrow, the Nishimaru. That's for American refugees only. Johnny's taking that, and I happen to be going on it myself through an embassy courtesy. Well, why don't you take the ambulance for her? Oh, I couldn't permit that. It's my responsibility. Well, I'd do that, Johnny, if I thought it would do any good. But believe me, it wouldn't save Irene if it were learned she'd sent it out. No. We've got to think of something else. Johnny, are you married? Hmm? No, of course not. Let me see your passport. Hey, what is this? Excellent. Landon. Now look here, both of you, get this. If this passport read Johnny McGinty and wife, Irene would have no trouble leaving Shanghai. If you were married to him, that would make you an American citizen. And you could be off with us tomorrow. But I couldn't do that, even if Johnny agreed. Wouldn't be fair to him. Besides, I... Besides what? Don't be foolish, my dear. This is urgent and necessary. And it won't mean actual marriage. You can have it annulled when you get to the States. But at least we'll get you out. Mrs. McGinty. Not bad. Then you agree, Johnny? Sure, I'll marry if it'll get us safely aboard ship and out of the country. But I don't see... There are no buts, Johnny. You're both intelligent people, not fools. Now, we'll work out the problem of travel some way. Well, that's settled. Yes, it is. Or is it? Now, for the amulet. Irene can't carry it, and it's too obvious. So you take it, Johnny. Or better yet, put it in your luggage. I've got a better idea. We'll put it in the camera. The camera? Sure. I'll take the back off, and we can put it right in there. Hey, that's a good idea, Johnny. It's the last place they'd suspect. <laughs> All Shanghai knows Johnny feels undressed without his camera. Well, now everything's settled. Let's get to work. I'll have a marriage certificate sent up here. As soon as you're married, we'll hop right over to the American consulate. Johnny, you go in and pack. 
Well, you don't mind if I change my clothes, do you? After all, I'm getting married. And a fella doesn't get married every day. All right, all right, but make it fast, will you, old man? Sure, I'll be back in a second. Oh, get me the American consulate, quickly, please. Say, do I kiss the bride now or later? Johnny, this is no time for clowning. Oh, I'm not clowning. See you soon, Mrs. McGinty. Mrs. McGinty? Well, you got the right name, but I can't place the accent. I not speak English good. Yeah, well, you don't have to with that thing in your hand. Ah, oh, it is understood then. You will go downstairs. In front of hotel, a car. You get in with car, no? I get in with car, I, yes. You fly running away, then come shoot. Oh, bingo, just like back night, huh? Funny, no joke. Fairly sober. No, you're not bluffing. You sure got one of those outstanding chins. Go. All right. Me follow. Allow me. Hey, you want me for anything? Not a thing. I didn't expect he would. <laughs> oh, uh, how, how do you do? How do you do? I'm awfully glad to see you. Isn't it a lovely day? Yeah, but it's no fault of mine, believe me. Go ahead, Tom. It's Garden Bridge. Cross over into Chapay. Keep on going. Now, Mr. McGinty, the less trouble you make for me, the sooner you will be on your own. Understand? Sure, I understand. But what's the idea of grabbing me like this? Well, I can overlook your brash conduct this morning. The young lady apparently was in distress. And you were impetuous enough to rescue her. Sure, being impetuous is one of my failings. How did you know my name? Did you think I was fool enough to drive off and lose track of you? I hope you forget about me. The young woman, where is she? The young woman? The young woman, uh... Oh, that young woman, why? Yeah, where is she? Uh, I don't know. I don't even know her name. After you left and I turned around, she disappeared. Don't lie to me. I want to know where she is. Now, what makes you think I'm lying to you? You followed me back to the hotel, didn't you? You know darn well I'm not lying to you. I never saw her after I caught your man Friday. And furthermore, if you didn't have that cannon in your hand, I'd lay one on your kitchen and it'd fold you up like an accordion. Oh, no, I got no time for histrionics. For the last time, I want to know where she is. For the last time, I don't know. She's gone, disappeared, savvy? For your home phone. No longer in the international settlement, Comrade Sargosa. You are in Japanese territory. Only diplomatic courtesy returns your pistol to you. Diplomatic courtesy cannot, however, allow you to retain your prisoner. So sorry. Come with me, please. I saved my skin. Your skin had no part in the interruption. I'm afraid that your life is of no interest to me whatsoever. It is merely that I take a peculiar delight in causing Sargosa as much embarrassment as possible. That and other things, Mr. McGinty. Uh, how did you know my name? This is beginning to bother me. 
It is my business to know names. Yours appears to be a problem at the moment. Well, I don't get it. You will? I am interested in knowing the whereabouts of a young lady by the name of Irene Roma. Oh, now, wait a minute. If you think I'm going to go all through that again, you... Go on. Well, uh... You know where she is? No, no uh, I just happened along when a guy with spats made a grab at her, and I butted in. Next time, I'll mind my own business. I should not advise you to lie. I'd be lying if I told you I knew where she was. You are not a spy. Me, a spy? No, I'm just a newspaper photographer. Here, look. Click. The money. This is where you get off, Mr. McGinty. And parting. I would be happy if you permitted me to offer a word of wisdom. Sure, go ahead. Should you meet Miss Roma in future, it will be advisable for you to avoid her. Her company at present is most dangerous. A gentleman is usually known by the company he keeps. How do you Americans say, yes, birds of a feather flock together? That is explicit enough. Good day. Mr. Barclay's room. I'm sorry, but Mr. Barclay's no longer staying at the hotel. He just checked out. Just checked out? Well, didn't he leave a forwarding address? Nothing. Well, uh... Oh, never mind. Whiskey and soda? No, give me a straight rye. All right. You know, Gallicuddy, I'm learning fast. I thought there was just an out-and-out -out war going on in this town. Now I find out there's plenty popping under the surface. That's Shanghai for you, Johnny. It's a hotbed of the world's worst and best. You want it at 25. Suit your road quick. Don't ask any questions. Up it. I'm glad to see you. We were worried you wouldn't make it. I was worried about you, too. But well, what happened? That Sargoza was taking me for a ride when I was yanked out of his car by an exceptionally tall Japanese sporting a monocle. Fuji Yokohama. Holy smokes! So that's the number one boogeyman. He warned me to stay away from you. Wait till he hears we're married. I take it for granted you still have the amulet. Oh, sure. I had that with me all the time. The suckers, all they had to do was reach out and grab it. Good day. Is this the happy groom? Yes, this is Wu Chang, whose home we're in. He's going to perform the marriage ceremony. Well, will the embassy recognize a Chinese wedding? Don't worry, old boy. It'll be perfectly legal. Wu Chang is an ordained minister. Well, then go ahead and tie the knot. Hey! Is the marriage certificate, Wu Chang? Don't I have to sign that? No, I signed it for you, Johnny, just to save time. It's just an ordinary marriage certificate. Say, whose wedding is this? Go ahead, Wu Chang. Over there, Lyrene, right next to it. That's right. We are gathered together to you unite this man and this woman in marriage, which is an inst institution or I don't want to interrupt, Wu Chang, but could you make it a bit faster, please? My English is clumsy. Can make faster if talk native tongue. I'll understand. Well, I won't. I'll tell you what to do, Johnny. Go ahead, Wu Chang. Just make it short and sweet, please. Go ahead, say I do, Johnny. He wants you to promise to love, honor, and cherish. What's the matter with obey? No obey. This modern marriage. Oh, I get it. I do. Irene is something I do. I do. 
Have you got a ring, Johnny? Any kind of a ring will do. Here, take this one. Yeah. I'll give it back to Irene, Johnny. Oh, an Indian giver, huh? I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. For a moment, I thought you were going to forget that part of it. No, now, wait a minute, Johnny. We've got to get to the embassy. You're always taking the joy out of life. May you enjoy happiness together until the day you die. Why do you have to bring that up? Come along, Johnny. Thank you. Thank you very much, Wu Chang. Congratulations, McGiddy. And uh, good wishes to you, Mrs. McGiddy. Thank you. Now, look, all you have to do is okay this passport for both of us. Sorry, I'd like to, McGiddy, but I can't. Can't? Look here, sir. If you're afraid that marriage certificate isn't legitimate, why don't you get in touch with Wu Shang? Well, sure, everything's on the up and up. We were just married, weren't we, Irene? Oh, well, I don't doubt that. But Miss Roma is not eligible uh, to... Mrs. McGiddy. Oh, I beg your pardon, Mrs. McGiddy is not eligible to enter the country without a passport. Why not? She's my wife. Doesn't that mean anything? Evidently, you've spent so much time everywhere but in the United States, McGinty, that you haven't kept up with its laws. Congress passed a law a number of years ago ending the custom where a foreign-born woman who marries an American automatically becomes an American citizen. Holy smokes. Well, this is certainly a good time to find that out. The only way Miss Roma could enter the uh, United States... Mrs. McGinty. Oh, I beg your pardon. Mrs. McGinty could enter the United States is under the quota laws. And before I could issue a visa, a passport would be necessary. Well, that's a fine kettle of fish. That's the reason we were married. I'm sorry I caused you all this trouble, Johnny. <laughs> oh, that's all right. I didn't mean it that way. It's just that we planned this thing so carefully, and now... Hey, Boffy, this was all your idea. Uh, why doesn't Miss Roma... Uh, uh, wait, I beg your pardon. Uh, Mrs. McGinty, uh, get a Soviet passport. Oh, uh, that's a long story. Would a passport issued by the Chinese office to? Of course. And it's all settled. But how? Don't ask so many questions, Johnny. Where can I get you later? Well, I've still got the hotel room. Good. Take Irene back there and wait for me. I'll be along shortly. Do me a favor, please, and wait until I return with the passport. It won't be long, I promise you that. You know, that guy's the number one mystery man to me. Well, we might as well be getting along to the bridal suite, huh, Mrs. McGinty? <laughs> yes, let me eat. Thanks. Johnny, you don't know how sorry I am that I got you into all this. Now, Mrs. McGinty, you mustn't talk like that. Have you forgotten we're married? You know, your troubles are my troubles and vice versa. Although I will admit, so far it's been mostly vice versa. <laughs> You're sweet, Johnny, but our marriage didn't help at all. It only put your life into more danger. Oh, regrets already, huh? And only married an hour. Think of the scandal. What will the neighbors say? <laughs> Mr. Barclay was right. You are incorrigible. Uh, that's a four dollar word. <laughs> You will take this to the Honorable Mr. and Mrs. John McGinney at the Cafe Hotel immediately. It will serve our purpose admirably. You will have the bottom opened and an explosive inserted, so that when the incense is burned in here, it will make contact with the explosive. Make certain that Mrs. McGinty gets it. See that this is delivered with it. 
I hope nothing has happened to him. To Barkley? No, he's got as many lives as a cat. You know, it isn't fair. A fellow like that lives to a ripe old age while a cautious, timid soul like Johnny McGinty meets with an early catastrophe. <laughs> well, it's the law of nature or something. I'd hate to be a widow so soon. Sweetheart, you couldn't hate the thought as much as I do. <laughs> That's Mr. Barclay. Maybe. Yes? You give to Mrs. McGinty, please? Sure, thanks. Hey, how did you know there was a Mrs. McGinty? Told to bring here. You give to Mrs. McGinty, please? Thank you. Thank you. But how does anyone know we're married? Unless there was a Chinese wall of windshield at the keyhole, I don't know, and I'm not going to try to figure it out. Open it. Lun Sat Lee. Who is that? May your marriage be blessed with happiness and devotion, Lun Sat Lee. <laughs> well, the old son of a gun. He's a friend of mine. I met him through Barclay. But how he found out we were married is beyond me. Isn't it beautiful? Yeah, it's all right. You know, that's our first wedding present. I'll have to send him a note of thanks. <laughs> what is it? Why, it's an incense burner. Oh. Oh! Did you get it? Why, of course. Didn't think I'd let you down, did you? Here's your passport, my dear. Signed, sealed, and delivered. Now you can leave with us tomorrow. I don't know how I'll ever thank you. Here, right before your husband's eyes. Oh, that's all right. Besides, you deserve it. If I wasn't so self-conscious, I'd kiss you myself. Say, <laughs> hey, that's a delightful thing. Where did you get it? Lun Sat Lee sent it to her, her first wedding present. But don't ask me how I knew we were married. Oh, I told him. You see, we're going to spend the night at his place. Sort of disappear until we get aboard the Nichimaru. city in a minute. Excuse me. What are you going to do? What do you think I'm going to do? I'm going to take some pictures. What's the matter with this thing? We're getting a little matter of an amulet. Oh, here, help me get it out. hiding place for this. Your excitable husband is liable to forget himself at a most inopportune time. Well, where else could we hide it? Let's see. I know. The Mandarin. The little place where the incense goes. It's a good idea. Put the amulet inside and wax up the opening. Photographs? Well, I never get enough, but these will hold me for a while. Say, that looks pretty good. You must have had experience with that sort of thing before. Well, come on now, let's all get out of here. I got a car waiting downstairs. a preview of what the next war will be like, Johnny. I hate to think of it.
got a gun, Johnny? No, you get in trouble carrying guns. Neutrals aren't supposed to go on. If they catch you... Right, if they catch you. Sometimes they're more comfortable than a hot water bottle. Well, I'd hate to put one on my stomach for a pain. To go. No, we'll be there in a few minutes, Irene. Well, I hope we're rid of our playmates. So say we all. Good work, Wack. Keep your eyes open now and be sure to sound an alarm if you see anyone. Hello, Lee. I'm glad you arrived safely. Mrs. McGinney, this honorable and venerable gentleman is Lunsat Lee, the man who sent you your wedding present. A meager token of my friendship for your husband. It's very lovely. And very handy, too, believe me. Handy? Skip it. Please come in. Make yourselves comfortable. Thank you. Is the boat ready, Lee? It is ready. A man sits in it now, waiting. You see, we're right over the river. In fact, it flows beneath this house. There's a 22-foot power launch below this room, all ready to go. Well, that's just in case something unforeseen happens. I suppose you had the foresight to plan all this. With the capable assistance of our good friend, London Sat Lee. Mr. Barclay, he is here with many men. Well, follow me, please. suicide boats. Well, our best bet is to try and board her now. Keep your fingers crossed, Mrs. McGinney. They're liable to shoot first and identify us afterwards. Dos tanques. 
Totten Star to Itamas. You have your credentials? Oh, yes. I have a carte blanche from the embassy. Very good. And uh, the others? I think you'll find our passports and puppy daughters. She's my wife. Yes, it reads all right. But then we can stay on board now? Most unusual. We did not expect passengers until tomorrow. But it is all right. Steward, the yeah, yeah, next to come. Follow me, please. This room is for Mr. and Mrs. Magindi. And this is for Mr. Fatih. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Oh, I'm glad that's over. For a while, I thought we'd never get on this boat. I think we can all relax now. In fact, that's just what I intend to do. I'll see you after I get cleaned up. Hey, hey, wait a minute. How about Irene and me? After all, this marriage was just... Uh... Oh, a marriage in name only, wasn't it? Completely slipped my mind. <laughs> well, come on in. We'll straighten it out somehow. Well, let's see now. Yes, that's all right. Johnny and I will take this stateroom, and you keep the other for yourself, Irene. Oh, now that's settled. Everything's fixed. Do you mind if I clean up a bit? I'll only be a moment. No, go ahead. We're not going anyplace. Another bombardment. Don't they ever get tired? a country for you. No bombardments over there. The only bombardments you see are the pop bottles around an umpire at a baseball game. I've never been to a baseball game. Well, you don't know what you've missed. But don't you worry, Mrs. McGinney. I'll see that you don't miss anything when we get there. You'll probably be too busy to see me. Too busy? Do you think I'm crazy? You think you're going to lose me just... Come on, Mrs. McGinty. I'll be escorted to your stateroom. You can come in at the darndest times. Oh, I'm sorry, old man. I didn't realize I was intruding upon a private tete tete tate I'll go back if you wish. No, it's too late now. Come along then, Irene. You must be dreadfully tired. As a matter of fact, I'm too happy to even think of being tired. Hey, uh, let's celebrate a little. Let's have a couple of drinks. Uh, uh, to, uh, well, to the Mandarin. <laughs> Grandpa came in handy. Heaven knows I'm not the one to put a damper on any celebration. Come on. I'll have the steward drink some scotch and soda. I'll celebrate with rye, do you mind? Not at all. I'd rather have a good drink of rye than a drink of scotch any day. Boy, when that hits you, that really does something. Good evening. Yokohama. So nice meeting you again, Mr. Buckley. I notice you disregarded my warning concerning Miss Roma. Well, uh, you see, we had a date to get married, and I couldn't very well leave her waiting at the altar. What do you want? The amulet. You will save yourselves a most unpleasant scene if you give it to me at once. I'm afraid, old man, you'll have to take it from us forcibly. That is, of course, if you can find it. Now, wait a minute. Don't be silly about this thing. He's got us dead to rights. Why not give him the thing and save a lot of trouble? Johnny! Look here, have you gone crazy? Oh, why be saps? He holds all the cards. Let him pick up the chips. Besides, I'm getting sick of dodging bullets all the time. Mr. McGinty is right. How did you say it? Yes, I hold all the cards. Where is it, please? Right here. You will hand the camera to me, please. From where you are. All right, I don't want it. Nice work, Johnny. Now, Mr. Yokohama, the cards are in my hands, don't you think? Permit me to compliment you, Mr. McGinty, an admirable ruse. Well, it's funny how handy a camera can be sometimes. You have made a dreadful mistake. You should have handed me the amulet as I requested. It would have saved the young lady's life. Now I have no alternative. What's he talking about? My dear fellow, it appears your life is the one that needs saving at the moment. 
No doubt you have hidden the amulet someplace else. In the package, perhaps. You've always been such a good guesser, Mr. Yokohama. Well, you needn't worry about it. You'll never get that amulet. Put up your hands, Mr. Barclay. I want the amulet. For yourself or the Soviet embassy? Diplomatic courtesy prevents my putting a bullet through your head, Mr. Yokohama. But diplomatic courtesy does not prevent my telling you to mind your own business. This is my business. Enough of this. Either I get the amulet or all There of is you... no necessity for threats. You want the amulet, I want my life. I care nothing for these others. You know where it is. In this package. Open it. You do not know how it is hidden. How stupid. Dropped it into the hollow with the figure and wax poured in. A match will melt the wax and drop the amulet down. If you are lying... See for yourself. Stand back. In that room, all of you. You too. Or did you expect me to leave without first verifying the hiding place? I did not think you would. You must have had a good reason for disclosing that hiding place, Mr. Yokohama. I did. You better not go in there. I understand now why you revealed the hiding place. I intercepted the gift from Lunsat Lee. I regret the necessity of being forced to such extremes, but I had to take precautions in case the young lady should escape with the amulet. You will be coming ashore with me now, no doubt. Going ashore? I thought you were sailing with us. You did not know. Know what? Mr. Barclay happens to be a first-class Chinese military agent. Empowered at the moment to buy ammunition with the funds that amulet was to release. He's more or less right, Johnny. I'm sorry I couldn't have told you before. Do not feel too badly. The trip would have proved useless. Permit me. I had hoped to get to the States before that would happen. I received it but a moment before coming here. Most unfortunate for you. I suppose you'll be going ashore too. I guess so. No, Irene. You stay with Johnny. There's nothing for you in China but trouble. Don't worry, I'll talk to your brother in Hoi Lung. Well, I'll be seeing you both up on deck before I go. You know, there's a fellow who knows what he's talking about. My brother almost killed. Our lives endangered and all for the sake of an amulet, which exists no more. Well, that amulet did some good. If it hadn't been for that, I never would have met you. Ahem. Sorry if I always seem to be barging in at the wrong moment, Johnny, but this is the last time I promise you that. Oh, that's all right. You're going? Yes, the launch is ready. So long, Johnny. Goodbye, and better luck next time. Goodbye, my dear. Take good care of her, Johnny. Goodbye, and good luck. The amulet! Yeah. What? 
Well, the old son of a gun. Hey, Barkley. I thought it was blown up. I thought it was in the Mandarin. That's what I wanted you to think. When I started to place it in, I noticed the Mandarin had been tampered with. So I decided to take no chances. Well, I'm doggone. Well, if we have the amulet, why don't you go with us? That cablegram changed everything, my dear. So let's hope the Chinese will find a better use for their money. They're clever, you know. At any rate, we eliminated Mr. Sargoza. So perhaps it was worthwhile after all. Won't you change your mind and go with us? Believe me, Johnny, there's nothing in the world I'd love more. It's been a long time since I've seen the Statue of Liberty. In fact, it's been a long time since I've seen liberty of any kind. I know just how you feel. I wonder. I'm like the prodigal son who counted the minutes until he could return home, only to have the clock suddenly stop. Give my regards to the Golden Gate and all the rest of the Americana. Well, next stop, America. Land of the fan dancers, Mickey Mouse, and Flatfoot Floozy with the Floy Floy. <laughs> oh, heaven bless us. Land of... My destiny. Whose destiny? I wouldn't take advantage of your gallant gesture in marrying me, Johnny. Oh, now, wait a minute. Our marriage might have been a gallant gesture, but there's nothing in the book says we can't make it to McCoy. Now whose destiny is it? Mrs. McGinty. That's better. Why, Johnny, you're rubbing it off. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm rubbing it in. Mm -hmm.